when they introduced the um, mobile devices, I could see huge potential because of the camera, because of the recording um, facility and the link into the internet. And of course, you know what teenagers are like with technology. So I thought if they could be so hooked onto technology, surely we could tap into that. To be honest, with the digital technology stuff, I, I didn't do a lot of it at university and there wasn't a lot there. Um, it was more the fact that I ended up here at um, Oriwa College and um, obviously the BYOD um, initiative here is massive. It's been pretty successful up to now. So big school, big bandwidth, big wireless um, and yesterday we had 2,400 devices on our wireless network. In music we do a lot on the computers. Um, because everything's pretty much like electronic for music nowadays. We do a lot of research and there's a lot of online videos that help us out. I haven't actually used my book in English, so the one subject for writing I haven't. For me it's, it's really about accessibility and transparency, so I can reach my students easier. Uh, if they have questions, they email me at all hours of the day, which I've learned to deal with. But um, some of their work, I can see it all the time, rather than just when they, you know, when they turn it in. Or to me, as a statistics teacher, I find it probably the most helpful. I think I kind of knew that I needed to learn, and I could see potentially huge um, benefits for the students. As I say, just with that whole individualized program and differentiating, um, and I and I really, it was just going boots and all and learn, um, get the support that I needed, get PD that I needed. We um, jumped on board straight away and uh, yeah, we just sort of run with it as sort of an analytical tool to start with. I kind of just jumped into it with both feet when I got here and um, along with obviously being a new teacher and doing that whole uh, thing, I tried to get a grasp on the whole technology and device um, kind of situation here and how I could best use that. I was always excited about it but I was a very slow learner and I think, and I think that was a fear myself that I might look slow you know, and the students might think, oh, does she know what she's doing? So, but no, it's all great now. It's all very well to be one step ahead of the students, but for me, I wanted to be confident in what I was doing. Make sure you've got all of your things ready, your resources ready, because there's nothing more frustrating than when you're in class, the teacher doesn't know how to do it because they're new to it as well, which would have been a completely hard learning curve for them. And it's extremely frustrating when you don't know what you're supposed to be doing. There was lots of um, learning from both sides, me with the content and the skills, those with um, them telling me, no miss, just turn it on or turn it round. It took sort of me saying, right, I'm going to give up this time and I'm going to play around. If I make mistakes, that's not a problem. We can just learn from that and then move forward. We were encouraged to try new things, I would say, you know, so there wasn't any type of someone's looking over your shoulder and if you don't think it's going to work flawlessly, don't do it at all. It is just trial and error and you've got to find, I think, what works best for your students as well as yourself. The best support we've had has been in-house PD, so really teaching each other. So as we discover things, we share them and we have meetings where we sit and collaborate. So professional development was the biggest, I guess, resource that we put into it. So there was lots of opportunity Tuesday afternoons and that six months prior to us going, every Tuesday afternoon, professional development was offered so that we could get together in groups. And it was just tiny little steps, so it wasn't as frightening. You've got to have a changed mindset. So having taught for so long, I'm so used to being at the front of the classroom, I hold the reins, they go at my pace. Now when you flip in the classroom, you're basically giving the impetus and the momentum over to the students. Engagement's hugely wider now because it's, it's just given more opportunities and, and different ways of looking at things for students. They're not restricted to that one book in the library on the solar system anymore. Suddenly you've got the entire knowledge of the world at your fingertips. So if you don't know something, you're able to look it up instantly. Sometimes they're just teaching the same thing over and over again and we're not learning much. But when you're using technology, we can watch online tutorials that they make at home. So we can do a lot of study at home by ourselves. We don't need the teacher's help. Yeah, the BYOD component of it does give kids the ability to make it a little bit more personal and fun and interesting. And, and this is the world that they're growing up in. So in the real world, we're going to be presented with a lot of information and then maybe we'll have to make a report out of it. Now, I'm not going to need to know all the information in my head already. I'm going to be given that. And then I need to be able to get my own taste, process it all, 
and put it out the other end as a better product. I think it's been awesome because the kids get to have a little bit more say over their own learning, um, choosing their skill, using themselves as that person to analyse. Um, I've noticed that they've become yeah, a lot more engaged in that learning. I find that using devices gives me a lot more creative freedom. So instead of just going off and making a PowerPoint like we used to in the old days, because that's all we could really do, we're going off and we're making videos, we're making interactive objects and stuff that uses technology to its full advantage. It's really rewarding to see the quality of work which they do when they do it properly and being able to monitor that. It's all about here, right now, and that's the world that they live in. You know, they don't want to know, go home and find that out and report back tomorrow morning. They've gone. You know, so it's there for them. So that changes the dynamics in the classroom and it changes the engagement of the students and therefore that leads on to success. What I'd actually like to see is my students now coming in through year nine, year 10, when they get to level one, two and three, they've actually got a nice learning log where they can look back and you know, they go, oh my goodness, we look at our choreography in year nine, I can't believe we got excellence for that and be quite reflective. Classroom management for me has been easier. Trying to personalize assessments and tasks in the middle of the class, I think has been um, not, not so much easier, but I'd say more effective. What we were very concerned about was we've put these students through three years of working digitally and working on a computer and, and typing, and how would they go in the actual physical act of writing when they hit an external assessment. Um, and they've showed us that they actually went better, we've got better results than we've ever had in, 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 for external assessments. The quality of work has gone way up, and I don't think that it's um, you know, it's still an authentic way of assessing. When it comes to assessments, it's usually a lot more internal based. So technology is used nearly 100% at our school when it comes to doing internals. So for business, for example, we just did a market research task, all done on my laptop. Uh, we also surveyed using SurveyMonkey, so it was all online. I didn't touch paper once in that. All our work is submitted digitally. Even our marking, we mark on the blogs. And so we do, um, we get together into committees and we cross mark. And that's just a whole list of uh, links to their blogs. And it makes for interesting marking because it looks good. You know, I'd rather mark that than a whole bunch of paper. It's given us not so much the flexibility to make the internals personalized to their uh, liking, but it's given us the ability to assess in a way that's more flexible. They understand the flexibility. I had a student that was overseas at one point during an internal and we still managed to figure out how to, how to make it work. Whereas in the past that would just have to be a, a missed opportunity. It's exciting. It's probably the most exciting thing that's happened in the last 30 years for me personally as a, as a teacher. We call it a journey, our, our technology journey. You never get to that end point because the more I find, the more I discover, the more I want to share, the more the students are teaching me. And so it's just mind-blowing because we'll sit in the staff room and we're not talking about how naughty this one was or we're talking about how wonderful something is. We're putting it onto our blogs, we're sharing with others. So I'd say it's, it really, it's reinvigorated my teaching career. All the advice in the world that we actually give students, don't be frightened to ask. Don't be frightened to ask again. Put the support in, make sure that there is the support, and go, go for it. Look at the endless possibilities that you can do. Challenge yourself and um, have fun. Start with the substitution. Start with just taking paper-based and making it digital, and then make it colorful, and then add links. But take the journey from the start. Don't try and jump in at the, the end point, and not even with blogging, for, perhaps. That might be a step too far. Just start at the beginning and take slow steps and, and, and watch the excitement and the engagement of your students. Some of these things that kids can just do so quickly, it takes us a while. And especially since sometimes there's no one that can show you how to use them because they've only been around for a couple of weeks or something. So, um, yeah, I'd say adequate time and support from staff. Hopefully you've got support from your senior management. And uh, don't be afraid to try things that may not work. The biggest thing for me when I first came here, just jumping in and giving it a go. And then you, I guess you can see the benefits that it has with the students. Um, and in turn, after a little while, I could see it actually made things easier for me as well. Technology is absolutely amazing when you know how to use it. 
So if you go out there and you try to learn and you try to understand how everything works and you can use it to its full potential, it will be an amazing journey that you'll go through. You'll be able to educate kids in a completely different way, in a much more engaging way. And I think that's the best way that you can educate New Zealanders.